Hello everyone, my name is Jauhar Ilham. I am Uyghur. For those of you who are not familiar with who the Uyghurs are, the Uyghurs are a Turkic ethnic group. We speak the Uyghur language, which is a Turkic language that is not related to Mandarin Chinese nor Cantonese. We dress differently, as you can see my little traditional hat that I'm wearing right now. We look different from Han Chinese, we eat different kinds of food. We also, most importantly, majority of the Uyghur population are practicing Muslims. We are from the Uyghur region, which is located towards west of China. The Chinese government likes to call it the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. You may have not heard about the Uyghur people, but I am certain right here in this room, there are a number of products that have been touched by the hands of the Uyghur people who have been working in forced labor conditions for massive multinational corporations. Whether we're talking about the cameras in the back um, or the outfits, for example, the Stanford University shirt or a white vest over there or a blue jeans over there. Or the floorings might be also from touched by the hands of the Uyghurs or maybe the walls or parts of the cars that are parked outside of this building or in a building just like this one. Researchers have linked Uyghur forced labor to the supply chains of over 17 industries, from beauty to mining to green energy to information and communications um, technology, automotive and food, and so many more. To be clear, I am not here to make you feel bad about the Shein or Zara shirt that you put on this morning or the wig that you could be wearing that are actually most likely from the shaved heads of my Uyghur brothers and sisters who are locked up in a prison or eradication camp or the Volkswagen and Tesla car that you and your family have been driving to school and to work. What I'm here to say is that we can all work together we can work together to push companies to change their behaviors and end their complicity in this crisis, in the human rights abuses of my people. For decades, the Chinese government has been implementing repressive policies in the Uyghur region, pointing at um, isolated instances of violence. The Chinese government labels all Uyghur people as religious extremists or terrorists in order to justify their human rights abuses towards my people in the Uyghur homeland. But really, the key reason for the oppression of Uyghurs lies in geopolitics. Maybe you did not know, but the Uyghur, Uyghur region is full of natural resources such as gold, uranium, natural gas, which marks up over China's over 20% of its total energy reserves and making the Uyghur region a natural powerhouse for China. And did you know that 84% of China's cotton output is from the Uyghur region, and that is 20% of the global cotton output. And 95% of the solar panels, we think of the, oh, the ultimate savior for the environment, relies on one key material, solar-graded polysilicon. 35% of the world's polysilicon, solar-graded polysilicon, is sourced and produced from the Uyghur region. 10% of the aluminum, which is a key material for producing cars, is sourced from the Uyghur region. 10% of the PVC plastics that's used to make panels, the ceiling, the floors, is sourced from the Uyghur region, and so many more industries. The region is also critical to the success of the Belt and Road Initiative which is China's flagship trade project, um, uh, trade and infrastructure project, aims to connect over 100 countries uh, via railroads, gas pipelines, shipping lanes, and other infrastructure projects. The Chinese government frames the forced assimilation of Uyghurs as a stabilization of ethnic unrest and development in service of the Belt and Road Initiative but the result is oppression and locking up millions. According to many well-known researchers, uh, there have been estimated of 
8 million Uyghurs and other Turk majority peoples have been sent subjected to eradication, detention, and forced labor. The Chinese government also transports Uyghur and other Turkic majority peoples to other parts of China, outside of the Uyghur region. Um, they're subjected to work in forced labor in factories across cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Shandong, Guangzhou. Forcedly trans uh, transfer workers, Uyghur workers and Kazakh workers are uh, do not have the right to refuse work placements, do not have the right to choose what profession they want to work in, and they have their IDs withheld. They cannot, ref they cannot go home freely or quit any time they want due to risk of punishment, not only to themselves, but also the risk of punishment for their families after work. Those workers have to be attending mandatory ideological trainings, which oftentimes includes um, Mandarin language training. Doesn't matter if the worker is 86 years old who have never spoken Chinese words before, or if they're a 15 year old, they have to memorize those Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, words and Chinese phrases. They have to memorize Chinese songs that praises the Chinese Communist Party. The systematic and state-sponsored forced labor uh, intersects with other types of egregious human rights abuses, which includes the destruction of centuries-old cultural landmarks, undermining Uyghur culture and customs, preventing Uyghurs from practicing their religion, gender-based sexual harassment, mass detention, mass surveillance, and forced sterilization. The birth rate of the Uyghur region dropped about 25% in one single year back in 2019, all in the aims of erasing the Uyghur ethnic identity and eliminating us from our own roots. The Chinese government's police state involves huge surveillance operations with numerous police checkpoints ac across the whole region. Every few blocks, you will see checkpoints like this. You will see police sitting at a desk, collecting people's phones, monitoring people's flows. What are they doing? Implementing surveillance uh, uh, applications into people's phones. My cousin, Nuralia Yalkun, she was stepped at one of those checkpoints. She refused to turn in her cell phone. Um, for non-compliance and for having a photo of my father in her cell phone, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. I'd like to share a little bit about my father. My father, Ilham Tohti, uh, he was an economics professor at Beijing University in, uh, at Minzu University in Beijing. Though he was an economist by training, he was best known for his public advocacy work for Uyghur rights and for promoting peaceful coexistence between the Han Chinese and the Uyghur people. For decades, he shared his academic findings, his research, he wrote articles, he talked to journalists. But he frequently angered the Chinese government and he was sentenced to life for separatism related charges. My father had never campaigned for separatism, nor called for violence or supported extremism. But while in prison, he was shackled beaten, denied food, tortured. Every time when he was denied food, each time lasted 10 days. And within the first few months, he lost over 40 pounds in prison. Today, I do not know where he is. I don't know if he has been transferred to another prison or to transfer to a re-education camp or to transfer to a factory to work day and night. I don't know. In fact, I don't even know if my father is alive. No family visits have been allowed since 2017. For Uyghurs, not knowing the whereabouts of our family members, not being able to simply call them, not being able to go home freely, not being able to practice our religion, our culture, having our rights taken away from us, it all had become a norm. The people in this picture are medical doctors, soccer players, singers, comedians, and intellectuals, including my father on the top left corner, in the left corner. 
none of these people need any so-called job training or re-education, yet all of them have either ended up in a re-education camp or a prison, including my father. How did that happen? How? Here's the debt population data collection form, which is widely circulated in the Uyghur region by local authorities. The authorities is able to collect information such as how many times a person prays, whether this person is even a passport holder, what countries they have visited, um, also, most importantly, their ethnic identity. Any of these data points can be used by the local authorities to decide whether this person deserves to go to eradication and whether this person deserves to be in prison. The organization that I work for, the Worker Rights Consortium, is a part of a global coalition. The Coalition to End Forced Labor in the Uyghur Region, which is a very diverse group from trade unions to student groups to investor groups to faith-based groups to Uyghur groups. We are calling on companies to end their complicity in the Uyghur crisis. At this point, no corporations in any sector, whether we're talking about cotton or tech or food or beauty, should be sourcing anything from the Uyghur region where state-sponsored forced labor is rampant. And in fact, if a company uh, would, like to, uh, would like to sell things in the US, no touch points of, from the Uyghur region is allowed because of the passage of Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act that was passed in the US in 2021. However, many more countries need to pass similar laws in order to make sure that their countries do not become a dumping ground for forced labor tainted goods. Whether we're talking about Canada or Mexico or Europe or Japan or Korea. I hope to see one day that Uyghur sons and daughters like me can go home freely without fearing of retaliation or imprisonment, can call their families freely without having to be afraid of whether that will put your family members in prison, can practice our religion freely, can speak our language freely. And I hope that, that day comes soon and you can help make that happen. At least you can help make that happen sooner. The truth is no matter our differences, we all, everyone in this room, we all share two things in common. No matter if we're rich or poor, no matter what our skin color is, what our ethnic background is, our religious background is, we're all human beings and we're all consumers. And that means we can have a voice and we can push companies and governments to make changes. Though in the US now we have a federal law banning the imports of forced labor made, Uyghur forced labor made goods, but still, Many people have never heard of the Uyghurs, nor even thought about how this region is woven into hundreds of um, thousands of internationally known household brands. Therefore, education and awareness raising is key. We all together need to call on businesses to change their behaviors. We need to hold them accountable and asking them to be more responsible with their practices. We need to call on governments around the world to pass legislation that actually work. And together, we may actually have what it takes to free my family and my friends and my people from now what feels like this endless life of captivity. Thank you.